and streaming live on your favorite device. This is KATC TV3, Acadiana's news channel at 5. We start out here at 5 with breaking news. The Biden administration has suspended new oil and gas leasing and drilling permits in federal waters. Those waters including the Gulf of Mexico. Now this moratorium is for 60 days and according to the administration, it's part of a review of programs at the Interior Department. The move is part of a campaign promise to ban all new federal drilling permits. The order is part of his wider agenda, the president's wider agenda to combat climate change. And we want to emphasize this is only for new drilling and leasing permits. Anything already underway will continue as normal. And we are working to learn more about what this means for Louisiana. Be sure to stay with us on air and online for the latest developments. This week marks one year since the first coronavirus case was diagnosed in the United States. And since then, more than 24 million people in the United States has got, have gotten sick with COVID-19. Of those, more than 400,000 Americans have died, that according to Johns Hopkins University. The graph on your screen shows how quickly the virus spread across the country. You can also see the exponential transmission of COVID in the last few months. Louisiana continues to see virus growth. The first COVID case was diagnosed in the state in March. Since then, more than 374,000 people have been diagnosed with the virus and at least 8,000 have died. As part of our continued commitment to you, we want to make sure you understand how things have changed, how they've stayed the same, and where we're going from here. Victor Georges looks into how our behavior has changed in just one year. Festivals canceled, holidays shifted, constant hand washing, and a whole lot of masks. That's how life has looked for the majority of Americans. And one year later, we ask, how did we get here? January 21st, 2020. The first travel-related case in the United States was found in Washington state. It then spread to every corner of the country. Now, with a new administration in Washington, many are wondering what, if anything, will change. One expert says one of the biggest impacts has been the changes in how people behave. What I see in this past year is that the, the communities are uh, uh, even more emphasizing mutual help, uh, mutual support, supporting small business, uh, supporting disadvantaged people. Dr. Lee says another big change is how we use our technology. By Zoom, a year ago, people don't know what that is. And now it's just become part of our daily routine. She also says that festivals, like Mardi Gras, are elements that provide a sense of belonging to members of any community. And we know that this kind of sense of belonging, sense of community, are crucial to the social capital of a city. And by social capital, we mean like the resources that are flowing within the city. Dr. Tina Stefanski is the regional medical director for the Department of Health. She says the past year has taken a toll on our region. You know, this was a, a very stressful year, um, you know, physically, mentally, financially for people. Some people still don't believe the virus is a real threat, even a year later. If, if people still hold that point of view, it's, it's going to be very hard to change. We've had over a thousand people in Acadiana die um, from this virus. As to where we are going, she says Lafayette and the surrounding areas can expect to see an increase in vaccination efforts. We, we are very hopeful that there will be a very aggressive um, vaccination campaign, but unfortunately at this time we're limited by the supply that we have. In Washington, President Biden wants to administer 100 million vaccines in his first 100 days in office. Dr. Stefanski says it will take a joint effort in the community in order to see the other end of the virus. In Lafayette, Victor Georges, KTC TV3. President Biden also unveiling his national COVID-19 strategy today. The plan is 200 pages long, and part of it involves reopening schools and daycares. The president says it's important to get children back to school so their parents can return to work. A plan to safely reopen schools and businesses while protecting our workers. Today, we're directing the Department of Education and the Department of Health and Human Services to immediately provide schools and communities with clear guidance and resources to safely reopen the schools and child care centers. President Biden today also asking all Americans to mask up for 100 days. He's asking those who visit federal properties to wear a mask as well. Well, the Louisiana Department of Health reporting more than 300,000 vaccinations have been administered across the state. That's 33,000 more shots since Tuesday. 
At least 260,000 people have received the first round. Over 38,000 have received both doses of the vaccination. The Iberia Parish School Board has approved the extension of COVID-19 sick leave for employees. Leave will now be extended until June 30th of this year. Both Lafayette Parish and St. Mary Parish School Boards already approved extensions there. For more coronavirus headlines, head over to KTC.com. Helping you get back to work, local owners of Spherion, a national staffing and recruiting company, will hold a virtual job fair next Wednesday. They're looking to fill a variety of jobs for all levels of training and experience. It's called the Let's Get Back to Work Lafayette Job Fair. It's happening Wednesday, January 27th from 10 in the morning until 2 o'clock. It's free for people in search of work, and the link to register is listed there at the bottom of your screen. We also have that posted at KATC.com rebound. Helping you get back to work as part of our rebound initiative here at KATC. For more resources on job fairs and how to make ends meet, you can find that over on the website. Here's Rob's 24-hour forecast. Well, as expected, a mild day, but a cloudy one across Acadiana. We started out in the lower 60s, uh, some upper 50s, but topped out in the lower 70s this afternoon. Now upper 60s and temperatures and dew points not spread by a whole lot. So tonight we're going to hold in the 60s as shower activity develops late this afternoon, early this evening. The bulk of the action across central Louisiana up through northern Louisiana. Mostly scattered showers heading this way. And a quick look at the uh, predictive radar model here showing uh, some spring sporadic showers through this evening. The bulk of the action staying to the north of us, but we'll see that building farther to the south overnight tonight through tomorrow morning. So on and off showers, maybe a rumble of thunder through early Friday and those rain chances staying with us early in the day. So rain chances up to about 80% to 90% overnight tonight. That's how we start off our Friday. So on a wet note, but the afternoon should be a little bit drier. Notice temperatures mostly in the 60s and north winds kicking in, so it's going to get cooler going into tomorrow night and into Saturday, but still some slight rain chances in the mix. And it looks like up and down temperatures and up and down rain chances in that longer range forecast. We'll talk more about that and talk about the rainfall totals we can expect over the next 24 hours coming up in just a little bit. Paris by Paris this Thursday evening, starting in St. Landry, where a humanist woman is facing an obstruction of justice charge in connection to a fatal Christmas morning shooting on Corn Street. Laura Williams was booked into the St. Landry Parish Jail last week. Clifford Campbell is facing a second degree murder charge in this same case. The victim in the shooting has been identified as Tommy Williams of Bill Platt. Well, the case of the mysterious package left at a Eunice family dollar store has been solved. According to police, a customer bought a new backpack, then switched out the contents of his old bag into the new one. And police say he mistakenly left behind a flashlight that could only be used with the help of an external battery source. Chief Fontenot tells us no harm was intended. Two people are facing charges in connection with an armed robbery at a Karen Crow convenience store. It happened January 12th at the ShopRite on North University Avenue. According to police, Angel Lopez and Yvette es Escalante were booked into the parish jail. Lopez is facing charges of armed robbery as well as a warrant for attempted second degree murder. Escalante is facing principal to armed robbery. Right now, the city of Franklin is under a boil water advisory. According to officials, the, that advisory is because of a water main break. Customers should boil their water for one full minute until that advisory is lifted. If you've looked at the General Mouton statue in downtown Lafayette, you may have noticed something. Part of the nose is gone. Take a look. Half of Mouton's nose isn't there anymore. Since the statue is owned by Consolidated Government, it's up to them to file a complaint with police about the damage. Until that happens, Lafayette police cannot investigate. We'll keep you updated on what happens. H. Gordon Brooks, the first dean of the College of Arts at UL, is retiring. Brooks' 27-year tenure makes him the longest-serving head of any of UL's eight academic colleges. He's also the longest-serving uh, arts dean in the nation. In 1990, Brooks assumed the role of the director of the School of Art and Architecture. Four years later, a merger happened with the School of Music. Brooks then became dean of what is now today known as the College of Arts. With the presidential inauguration taking center stage yesterday, that's not to say there weren't any other things worth mentioning. Yeah, for instance, January 20th was also National DJ Day. And in tonight's Spirit of Acadiana, Scott Brazda talks with one of the area's best. So a day after National DJ Day, we are celebrating one of Acadiana's story disc jockeys. Today we are talking to... Hey y'all, it's CJ and Jen. Good morning, Acadiana. Cloudy today, about 40% chance of shower 73. We hope you have a great day. 
That's beautiful. I started at 95.3 KQKI in Bayou Vista, Bayou Louisiana. Vista. Bayou Vista, Morgan City. Your, 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 your uh, what was it? Your country loving DJ CJ. My first song as a practice was Ramblin' Man by Waylon Jennings. When I pressed that button, I just thought it was the greatest thing ever in the history of the world. I thought, oh my, there's nothing better than this moment. I always just knew, you know, so many people these days don't know what they want to do in life. And they go to school and they get out of school and they don't be what they went to school to be. And I always, I've never had another notion to be anything else but on the air. I just simply love it. So for National DJ Day, which was yesterday, CJ Clement, the legend, Scott Brasner, from the halls of Bayou Vista to the shores of KTDY, he is the man. In Lafayette, Scott Brasner, KTC, TV3. Right here on Acadiano's News Channel at 5. Coming up, UL students are taking part in a world-class experiment here on campus. I'm Kaylee Norman, and I'll tell you what that is. Kaylee's story coming up after Rob's full forecast for where you li live. That is next, but as we head to break, a look at one of Katie and a business hiring workers right now. If you want to apply for this job, or if you're an employer who wants to be featured, just visit our Facebook group, The Rebound, Katie and Jobs. Post on the wall, and you can be featured right here at 5. We'll be right back.